What's the word, y'all? They always say that Sunday is for football, and I understand it. It's one of the few days that NFL football is on. But if you didn't watch basketball tonight, then you really missed out on some crazy and some all-time performances man we had our two first 50 pieces of the season Darius Garland put 50 on the Minnesota Timberwolves despite the loss and he held that record for, for the only 50 piece in basketball for maybe two hours before Joel B just put together an absolute masterclass one of the most dominant performance I have ever seen with my own two eyes 59 points 11 rebounds eight assists and seven blocks and I want to say like four of those seven blocks came in the fourth quarter late in the game getting back on defense block uh, Jordan Clarkson going to the basket a couple different times. Block. Laurie Market and layup. Block. Colin Sexton pull up jump shot. Block. This man, Joel Embiid, was on a whole nother level. You like the shirt I got on? Um, th this right here is a part of a collection that I designed with the Chicago Bulls. Me, Chicago Bulls, House of Highlights, and it goes on sale later today. Uh, my Kenny For Real people get to see it first. And I appreciate it if you guys just follow me on socials to get updates because this is a shirt. There's another shirt. There's a pair of sweatpants. There's a bomber jacket. And, and y'all getting the, the deal right now. So when it does drop, you know that it's dropping and you can pick it up before they sell out. I know we talked about it in a few videos ago when I was at the Chicago Bulls game and I was throwing t-shirts for Benny the Bull and they put me on the Jumbotron. I went to that Bulls game, went into the Madhouse shop, which is like the biggest shop for the Chicago Bulls. And the first thing I saw when I walked in was a sign that said Kenny Beecham, Chicago Bulls, and it had my stuff on the table. And then I, I was looking for fans at the game to buy it for we found it and we we bought it for a bunch of people and when i was ringing out with the fans uh, like shirts and stuff one of the employees said we had to restock that table about three times tonight <laughs> yo they sell it they sell it man and you need to get it get on in it too um if you're a bulls fan or a kenny beecham fan or just whatever i appreciate any support uh, just follow me on socials i want to say it's four o'clock central but I can't promise that. Just be on the lookout. All right, let's talk about Joel Embiid slash the 76ers. Because after that loss, they are 7-7. Seven and seven, Or after that win, they are 7-7 seven and seven on the season. Joel Embiid came back from his time where he was dealing with a non-COVID uh, illness. And they won their first game. I want to say it was against the Atlanta Hawks or whatever. And he came up to the podium and he said, our season starts now. I don't care what happened in the first two weeks of the season. Our season starts now. And a lot of people saw that as extremely bold for a guy that, or not a guy, but for a roster that hasn't had a lot of playoff success. Or even, well, you can say Joel Embiid, because, I mean, P.J. Tucker wasn't the one saying that. So for a guy in Joel Embiid who hasn't had a ton of, like, playoff success, who, who are you to say the first two weeks didn't matter? But listen, he backing that stuff up. I am, I'm going to be honest with you. Today, I am donkey of the day. Jackass of the day, if you will. Because last night, uh, Joel Embiid and the 76ers played a game, and he put up 42 points. And in my mind, y'all know we play prize picks. Shout out to them. They're not sponsoring this video, but they will be sponsoring tomorrow's video. Best believe it. Um, and, and he put up 42 last night, a crazy performance in itself. And in my mind, I was like, okay, Joel Embiid on the back-to-back -back after missing a couple days or about a week or so with, a, with, a, with an illness. He already don't have a crazy track record in planning back-to-backs. I'm going to take the under. He had 59 tonight. And not only did I take the under on the points, I took under on points, rebounds, assists combined, and they ended up with 11 assists. I mean, 11 um, rebounds and 8 assists. So a donkey of the day, Kenny Beecham. That's what I get for, for, like, going under. I usually just go for overs and overs, but every once in a while, I, you know, I look at an opportunity and I say I'm going to take that. And I just figured that with him being on the back-to-back, -back, it wouldn't be that nice. But I had to remember he was going against the Utah Jazz, and though they've been amazing so far, if you look at their roster, who did I think was going to stop Joel Embiid? Especially, go go back and watch the moments. If, if you, you go to bucketlist.fans, not a sponsor either, but you can watch the moments of this game, right? The, all the possessions for Joel Embiid. It wasn't many times in this game when the Utah Jazz decided to throw a double team at jojo they was like okay we gonna let him beat us nobody else and and that formula kept them in kept them in the game for the entirety of it but not long enough because Joel Embiid and the 76ers pull out with that win and what a what a great great game for Joel I can't say he single-handedly did it because Tyrese Maxey had 18 but this is about as close as single-handedly winning the game that I've ever seen so shout out to Joel Embiid go get some rest go put Arthur to sleep um because that was one of the reasons why he didn't want this game to go to overtime he had to put his boy to sleep and I can respect I can respect that as a, as a parent myself. So past that, let's talk about the other 50 piece on the night, 
Darius Garland. It was in a loss. The Minnesota Timberwolves won a game. Shout out to him. I dropped a video yesterday of me rambling about the NBA. It's a 34 minute video. 20 minutes of those are just me talking about the Timberwolves. So if you want to hear a bunch of Timberwolves talk, go watch that video. The good thing about the Wolves is that D'Angelo Russell came out in this game and I think he started off with 15 points in the first quarter. He's perfect from the field. And for a guy that had been slumping for the very beginning of it, this is an amazing game. Um, Car Anthony Towns also came to play after him killing my last entry by him scoring like eight points or whatever it was so they win a game even though it was not pretty because once we got to that second half that oh specifically that fourth quarter that's when Darius Garland started to do his magic it got to the point where they were going they, they were trying to fight through screens. I want to give a lot of credit to Evan Mobley in this one. I want to give a lot of credit to Robin Lopez and Kevin Love because they were setting some really big body screens to allow Darius Garland to do what he wanted to do and ah uh, should I show this footage I'm going to try to show this footage for y'all. Let me see if I can find it. This is not what I want to talk about, but this play right here is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, just to, to look both of those defenders off is insane, but that's not the play I want to show. Look at my three-time defensive player of the year talking to his teammates about how to get better defensively. What, what a guy. What a guy. Again, I'm not an X's and O's guy, but you're going to see this double screen that they're going to set here for him. And then what you're going to notice is Carthony Towns doesn't come up on this one. And then he's dropping back. That's the easy three pull up for Darius Garland. He had already hit three threes going into that possession right there. They set the screen even higher this time around. And Carthony Towns doesn't step up. What happens? Three pointer Darius Garland. Now they're playing it super high. You see Rudy Gobert is playing up. You're not about to get that pull up three pointer against me. And then what happens? Um, step back three pointer in the corner. <laughs> Bag is nasty. All right, so here's another screen coming in. Another double. Trying to cause some confusion. I don't know what this is called, but both of them show it leaves Jetty Osmond open. Don't matter. Doesn't matter. So you can go over the screen. You can go under the screen. The big can come up. The big can drop. It didn't matter today for this man Darius Garland in the fourth quarter. And here's another one where nobody steps up at all, and it's an easy floater. So, yeah, they ended up losing this game. But if I'm a Cavaliers fan, I feel pretty good because Darius had been struggling since he came back from getting hit in the face. Um, maybe he can finally see again. But big win for the Minnesota Timberwolves, even though there was no J.A. and there was no uh, Donovan Mitchell. You got to get wins, man. You got to get wins. And this was not a game that they was winning two weeks ago. So, win is a win. Let's go back to the first game of the day that started off very early on. I was watching this game until the middle of the second quarter. And middle of the second quarter is like a 12 point game. Things were going slow. I was like, you know what? I just keep up with the notifications. Got to halftime and these these boys, the OKC Thunder ended up putting seven, 79 points on the head of the Knicks. And I'm seeing a lot of Knicks fans calling for the head of Tom Thibodeau. So we'll see what happens there. Down the stretch, you know what I saw? Evan Fournier on the court. Evan Fournier played all 12 minutes. Um, Spoiler alert, y'all. If you didn't watch this game, Fournier did not hit a shot this game. He didn't hit a single shot, but played the entire fourth quarter. It makes no sense to me, Tom Thibodeau. I hate to say it because you was one of the guys, you know. But yeah, so far this Knicks season has been weird. The Wizards are just one of those teams that I feel like I don't get an opportunity to watch, right? So their game and the Cavs-Minnesota game started at the exact same time. And then I saw that there was no John Morant and I saw there was no Desmond Bain. And I was like, damn, it's going to take a lot to focus on this one. And I turned it off. But Porzingis continues to just have a very underrated season. And now the Wizards have won three straight games. It's been Memphis, Utah, and then Minnesota. No, it's been it's been three playoff teams. And they've beat all three or three supposedly playoff teams um and they beat all three so I, I don't know somehow they still continue to win games shout out to michael porter jr question y'all do y'all watch youtube shorts i dropped a youtube short maybe four days ago about michael porter jr and his jump shooting ability and the fact that he said he wanted to shoot 50 percent from three tonight i don't know if the bulls fans saw that article or watched my short because them boys could not get out there in time for michael porter jr and he's such a special player because may even when you do get out there on him he's damn near seven feet tall and he'll shoot right over you. He's a close to seven foot tall shooter who legitimately has like six inches of vert on his jump shot. Man, that, that sentence could have gone a lot of different directions. He jumps very high when he shoots the basketball. And um, he hit a lot of those shots. And we, we're getting to the point where Jokic don't need to score even double digits to win games. He had like 13 assists in the first half. And the honeymoon phase is over for Bulls fandom. I'm very curious to see what the Chicago Bulls end up doing because... We don't have our own first round pick. And I think because of that, the front office are going to stay pat or try to be buyers right now because there's no reason to sell uh, because what are we getting back in return? We can't get Vic even if we, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, but yeah, it's past the honeymoon phase. A lot of Bulls fans are really upset right now, which makes sense to me. I can't say I'm extremely upset because I personally didn't have any real expectations. If you watch my, my Eastern Conference preview video, um, I was saying in that video that I expected us to be a playing team this year. If you watch the video of me and Rusty Buckets, we talked about how the Bulls were kind of stuck and not even just the middle, but slightly below the middle. And they gave up a 2021 first round pick, a 2023 first round pick and a 2025 first round pick, if I'm not mistaken, to build this roster. And uh, this is this is what we got, you know, so I'm excited to see what happens. I wonder how long it takes until Bulls fans turn on the front office because we gave up a lot to build this core with Zach Vucevic and DeMar. And those are supposed to be our big three. Those are supposed to be our three players that are in all star contention every single season there. They have a net. Ne they have a net negative rating together and it, they had a net negative rating last season, too, if you didn't know. So it's been a, a season plus 13, 14 games where the three haven't been able to outscore their opponents because they give up a bunch of points so we'll see <laughs> honestly um before this game the bulls were top five in defense um i'm assuming that they won't be there right now oh they failed to number six ladies and gentlemen this is some of those numbers are so deceiving i mean we have the 24th ranked offense that makes sense to me there's no fluidity on the court at all on the offensive side of the ball we don't have any weapons um outside of zach and demar trying to go supernova if one of them can't do it then the bulls really don't have a chance to win games especially not games against good teams like the Denver nuggets shout out to them for that win next we got the the kings oh man i should have talked about the kings a lot earlier okay so the kings started off their season 0-4 and, and i came onto this show and said I'm, I'm i'm done I, if you watch the podcast if you watch this this channel i had been hyping the kings up all off season they got their own video about how much i like them the 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 the, the Aaron fox before the season started i was saying that he was about to have this all-star jump and it, it was in the first four games i was feeling so bad about my pick that in this on this channel i said i'm i'm done I'm not done watching but like done being invested that that's what it was not done watching not done rooting but being invested i i i was rooting for them as if they was my team and in the first four games they looked ass and then things start to turn and right now they're on a what three game win streak they beat the golden state where's the defending champion and they had two games ladies and gentlemen two games taking away from them now we don't know what would have happened if they would have called a travel on the Tyler Hero game winner or if they would have called a foul when Klay Thompson fouled Kevin Herter we don't know if Kevin Herter hits all three of those free throws we don't know if they go to overtime versus the Heat end up losing but two opportunities were thrown away by refereeing and somehow they're still here oh man Demonte Sabonis in the last five yeah yeah that's the version of them they was looking for that's the version of him that they traded for and that's the version of him him and De'Aaron that we saw a very small sample size that made me a believer in them as a pairing on the offensive side of the ball you're seeing that to have a game where De'Aaron had 22 and down the stretch he has been magnificent not just this game the last game and the game before that it does suck though that it seems like every one of their games like literally down to the wire. I feel they they need like that good 15, 20 point win because I know Kings fans on the edge of the edge of their seat. They, they the beam is is going crazy in Sacramento. Um, but a 2020 game for Demonte Sabonis is beautiful. I mean, in the first quarter alone, him on those that short roll, he was finding his teammates, and it was magic. It was beautiful. Kevin Herter, unsung, unsung hero of the season so far. He continues to just be consistent as hell from behind the arc. And Keegan Murray, since they slid him into that starting lineup, you know, he has had some ups and downs. This was definitely an up one. It was a few possessions in this one where Demonte Sabonis would give it to Keegan, and Keegan wasn't op open, and then he'll, redir he'll redirect himself and then the monster bonus finds keegan it's like oh snap they build a chemistry like that already oh it's over with i feel so happy for kings fans because they've been in hell for 16 seasons is it 16 i don't know uh warriors y'all got a game tomorrow i swear to god if y'all lose that game we drop into this video i've been i've been hesitant to do it but the way y'all performing right now is crazy mike brown was hired to be a defensive coach and let me do my quick my quick search right here sacramento kings uh, 27th ranked on defense. It's not, it's not great. Um, 22nd in the last two weeks, though. So there you go. Getting progress. The offense has been elite. Um, but Mike Brown was hired to be a defensive coach in this game. He he had his game plan ready. They were blitzing the hell out of Steph Curry. Blitzing. And for years, teams would blitz Steph Curry 
and it was like, ah, there's Klay Thompson. You can blitz all you want. You can door double all you want. We got Klay Thompson, shooter. We had Jordan Poole last season, shooter. We had Kevin Durant for three seasons, shooter. You couldn't really do it and get away with it. Right now, teams are daring the others to do anything. And Steph Curry just came off 240 pieces, a 40 and a 47. He has been magnificent. But at this point, they need a 40 piece from Steph Curry to, to win games, which is crazy. So again, we, we might drop a video on the Warriors, but they got, they got tomorrow. And that tomorrow, they're going against the Spurs. We're a feisty, good team right now. So I don't, the Spurs always feel like they're missing one player. They just sit one player game just so things can be kind of iffy. Um, but they got to face Charles Bassey. And Charles Bassey is a different breed. Last game of the day, we got Vintage Anthony Davis in this one. This is the, this is the most points Anthony Davis has scored as a Laker in over a season. Since I think the season opener last year, 35 points. Oh, I'm sorry, 37. I think at 35 last year. So this might be the most he scored in the last season. And this looked as close to Vince's AD as we, we've really seen. He took over this game. He was aggressive as hell. And he ended up with 37, 18 boards. It's beautiful. Um, and ended up beating a team that was playing good basketball until this point. So um good win for the lakers look at look at ad he heard the noise oh Lonnie walker deserves a lot of love too skywalker's been really really stepping up and they need him too um russell westbrook i did not realize he had 12 assists in this game there you go he didn't shoot the ball great but i didn't realize i was watching this game and yeah he was having his moments passing but i didn't realize it got all the way up to 12 so shout out to him um so yeah that that's th that there we go ladies and gentlemen that is a recap of today's video um or today's games uh, go get the merch when it drops, please. Thank you.